Good morning everyone. I'm Rosemary from MSC Biology. So today we are going to discuss about the human disease caused by bacteria. As we know there are several diseases uh, which is caused by bacteria. So today we are focusing only four diseases which is uh, very uh, which is which happens by the bacteria. So first of all the leprosy and the causative organism of leprosy is mycobacterium leprae. As we know, leprosy is a chronic granulomatous disease and it is uh, involving the skin, peripheral nerves and uh, nasal mucosa. These are the regions which is affected by the leprosy. And uh, this, this is not only the uh, areas but any uh, regions, uh, any tissues can be affected by leprosy but this is the most susceptible areas in the body. And it is also known as Hansen's disease. There are several types and the major four types are lepromatous, indeterminate, tuberculoid, dimorphous. And coming to the causative agent that is mycobacterium leprae. It is straight or slightly curved road shaped and it is also known as leprosy bacillus or Hansen's bacillus. Why this, uh, this name is that this causative agent, this microorganism was first discovered by Gerhard Hansen in 1873 and uh, it is the first bacterium to be identified as causing disease in humans. And here you can see the picture of mycobacterium leprae. It's a microscopic view. Then the pathogenesis. It is exclusively a human disease and the only source of infection is a patient. When we have a contact with direct contact with the patient, then we will uh, we will get infected by this bacterium. And the mode of entry may be through respiratory tract or through the skin. So it is susceptible to everyone. And uh, it may be asym uh, asymptomatic infection appears to be quite common in endemic areas and the incubation uh, PD has a large range that is few months to 30 years up to 30 years and the symptoms the unattractive skin sores that are pale in color in the skins it is the most uh, common uh, symptom of leprosy and of course the lumps or bumps then the nerve damage then the inability to sense feeling in the arms and legs as well as the muscle weaknesses then the symptoms usually take three to five years from being exposed to manifest within the body whether it enter in our body it will take some time to express the symptoms then the laboratory disease of uh, leprosy is lepromin skin dense then nerve biopsy then the acid fast stain then the treatment of leprosy it can be uh, we can treat it with antibiotics like Dapson. It is the first effective the, uh, chemotherapeutic agent. And uh, there are, and in addition to that, uh, that there are several multiple drug therapies. And the vaccine development is currently going on. Coming to the next one, it's cholera. So cholera is an acute diarrheal disease. It can leads to several severe uh, dehydration and electrolytic electrolytic imbalance. So. What happens is that the hydration of this condition can cause the skin to turn bluish in color. Then the causative agent. The causative uh, agent of this cholera is, as we know, it is Vibrio cholerae. It's a short curved cylindrical road with rounded pointed ends. And the cell of Vibrio is typically comma shaped. That's the name Vibrio. Then the, it is actively motile one and single sheathed polar flagellum. So here you can see the, uh, the coma shaped vibria cholerae. Then the pathogenesis. It can be ingested by the contaminated water, food, fruit or any vegetables etc. So the incubation period of uh, this organism is 1 to 5 days and the vibrio cholerae endot enterotoxin activates the similatory GS protein via ADP ribosylation. This stimulates secretion of chloride ions and water from enterocytes into the small intestines and causing watery diarrhea. So this is the main, this watery diarrhea is the main symptom of uh, this cholera. Then the symptoms as I said, profuse watery diarrhea then along with vomiting, thrust like cramps, restlessness etc. Then the laboratory uh, test can be the visualization by dark field, gram staining and uh, we can uh, identify or isolate this bacterium from the patient's stool. 
then the treatment uh, first of all the intravenous or oral hydration because it causes dehydration initially and uh, we can treat it with uh, uh, the antibiotics like doxycycline ciprofloxacin and azithromycin coming to the ne next one it is the typhoid which is caused by salmonella typh typhi so typhoid Typhoid fever is a life-threatening infection caused by the bacterium Salmonella typhi, as I said earlier. Then uh, it is usually spread through the contaminated food or water. Around 2 lakh people die from it every year. So it's a huge uh, statistics and uh, it is also known as enteric fever. So uh, Salmonella typhi can be two type. It can be uh, uh, non-typhoidal or typhoidal. It is definite parasite to human. So here you can see the picture of Salmonella typhi. Then the pathogenesis. First of all, it will ingest into the body uh, through the mucosa and it passes through the intestinal mucosa and it will be entered into the mesoendric lymphoid system or, uh, and uh, what happens is that it will uh, move to the bloodstream then again send back to the bloodstream. Within that period, they will, uh, they will grow and uh, nourish over there. And the symptoms, it can be prolonged fever along with fatigue, headache, nausea, then abdominal pain, then the constipation, either constipation or diarrhea. Then the laboratory test, the common test of uh, typhoid fever is vital test and uh, we can uh, uh, we can isolate and identify this, uh, this bacterium from other methods too. Then the treatment, we can uh, treat typhoid uh, fever uh, by the antibiotics like fluoroquinolones, cephalosporins and azithromycin and there are several, uh, there are two type of vaccines which is currently going on uh, uh, with us that is WIC, PS and TI2, 2 a Then the fourth one and the discussing the last one that is tetanus and the causative agent of tetanus is Clostridium tetany. So tetanus, it's a serious bacterial infection that causes painful muscle spasm uh, can lead to the death. So because the reason behind it is that it directly affects the nervous system and it is also known as logjo. And the, as I said, Clostridium tetany is a causative agent. It is a gram positive motile road shaped bacteria. Uh, the spores of this agent is present in the terminal part and uh, that's why it, it gets its drumstick appearances. So here you can see the picture of tetany, Clostridium tetany. Then the pathogenesis. The spores enter its host through the open wounds or lacerations or burns. If, if, whether our body has an opening like wound or laceration, it can enter. So in the even in the anaerobic conditions, the spores can germinate. So this is when the spores produce toxins that are harmful to the human nervous system. These toxins affect our nervous system, then leads to the, uh, that kind of uh, severe diseases. Then the symptoms. The symptoms of uh, tetanus is the intact sensorism along with the spasms of facial muscles, jaw stiffness, fever, restlessness, chills, profuse sweating, uh, exaggerated reflexes, then the tonic spasms. Then the laboratory tests of uh, our tetanus is uh, sugar fermentation test and the indole test, then the Latin liquefaction test, methyl red test. So these are the four tests which is employed for to identify these uh, tetanus and uh, treatment. We can uh, so, uh, we have kind of uh, surgical methods to treat tetanus. That's like uh, we can remove this bacterium from the dead tissue or contaminated tissue or blood clots etc. And also, uh, we can treat it with the antibiotics like penicillin and uh, erythromycin. So, uh, these are the kind of treatment that can uh, do for tetanus. So, these are the four diseases that I have discussed today. Uh, thank you.